Here's some advice. If you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> Thanks for those wise words, Yogi Berra. However, if you see a bent fork in your door, that's not a good sign. Burglars have turned forks into sinister tools that help them unlock doors from the outside. They bend the two middle tines. Then they wedge the fork between the door and the door frame next to the lock. When the fork goes inside, these two tines grip the lock. The whole construction fits perfectly, and this way, criminals get enough friction to wiggle the lock back and forth. It takes a while, but they can usually open the door. The fork in your door means your door is done. <laughs> well, actually, it may mean that no one is in the house yet, but they're planning to come, maybe when you go to sleep. The troubling thing is, is that you'll hardly notice anything strange if you look at the door from the inside while this fork is in. Criminals shape forks in a similar way to a rake. If you know anything about the tools people use for lockpicking, you might be aware that they use a rake to align the pins on the top of a lock. This way, the wrench can easily twist and open it. Now, if you've already had some negative experience with burglars, be careful. You might believe they won't visit the same house twice because it's too risky. But in reality, they do come back to the same houses multiple times. For instance, they may come back for the things they didn't manage to take the first time. Plus, they're already familiar with the house, which saves time. Also, the owners might have already replaced the stuff the burglars had taken. And often, such replacements can be even better quality than the originals. One of the ways you can protect your valuables from thieves is to glue your spare key under the doormat. But it shouldn't be the one that opens something important to your house. There have been multiple cases when a thief would walk to the door and check under the mat, which is one of the first spots where they check and unsuccessfully try to take the key. They soon back up, check around to see if anyone's watching, and leave. Perhaps they think it's some kind of a prank or a trap. They wouldn't even try to look for another way to enter the house because this scenario seems too weird for them. Now, you can leave a pair of big work boots outside on the porch right next to the door. A burglar will notice them first. Unless they know you or are sure you're away, they'll probably step back. These boots basically tell them someone is at home at the moment, and it might be a big strong man that's ready to defend his house. If you don't like tidying your room, here's a good excuse you can use. Burglars tend to avoid messy places. It probably seems to them that nothing valuable can really be there. <laughs> cool, I've been doing that for years. You probably use a doorstop to prevent doors from closing, right? But when you place it behind an inward opening door, it becomes a pretty useful tool that won't allow anyone to open the door from the outside. Yup, not even if they can turn the doorknob. And this is a great way to secure your home, for example, in case your door lock is broken. But this can only be one of the methods to use because an intruder might eventually deal with the doorstop if they try long enough. Consider a sturdy chair, too. You can angle it so that the top of the chair fits under the door handle while the feet are planted against the floor. This way, you create some pressure between the ground and the door and prevent it from opening. Also, the back of the chair can block lever-style door handles, so no one can open them downward. This may not work that well if you can also turn your handle upward to open the door. In this case, you can take a rope or belt and tie the lever handle directly to the chair. Now, think about installing laminated windows. Regular windows that are made of safety glass or tempered glass usually shatter into shards when you hit them. This makes it easy for an intruder to get into your house very quickly. Laminated windows shatter, but they don't break apart because there's a layer of plastic that holds the shards together. At least it will prevent a burglar from making a hole they can climb through. And if the window is hard to break, thieves are more likely to give up and leave. Laminated windows are two times as expensive as standard double-glazed ones. If that's too much for you, you can hire a professional to install glass laminating film over the windows you already have. Security film is even cheaper. It's based on the same principle, but isn't as effective. Another tip on how to protect yourself from someone breaking into your house? Try not to post where you are on social media until you have gotten back to your house. If someone is planning to break into your home, they will be waiting for an opportunity to do it when you're definitely not there.
And if you're posting about this great time you're having at a party or on a wonderful vacation, this could be a sign for them that no one is at home. Always check who you're letting into the building or your house. Some people simply trust whoever comes to their door. With this in mind, if a stranger comes and introduces themselves as a salesperson, try to verify their identity. Don't let them know where your valuables are and pay attention to the questions they ask. Also, if you allow someone to enter your home, don't let them know you're alone. Pretend someone's sleeping in the bedroom, even if there's really no one in the house besides you. Better still, just don't answer the door, unless you're expecting someone in particular or you recognize the person through the people. Try to find good spots to hide valuables. Avoid your bedroom, especially under the bed, the closet, or some other spots where most criminals tend to search first. Maybe choose some unusual hiding place somewhere in your kitchen. How about making a hole in the wall and covering it with a picture? Or opt for a dark corner in your closet. A soccer ball is a good option, too. Let some air out of it and cut one of the seams. After you hide your valuables, tuck the seam back into its place. If you're building a piece of furniture, add a false bottom or top. Let's say you're assembling a dresser. Place a piece of 1 quarter inch plywood right above the top drawer. Then install a piano hinge on the top. Ta-da! You have your stash spot. Now get to know your neighbors. This way you'll never really be alone. You can help them out too. If you see a stranger snooping around your neighbor's house, you can warn them. This way, you'll become a pack that watches each other's back. Get a safe. Actually, get a couple of them, each smaller than the previous one. Place them somewhere in an obvious place, the ones burglars would search first, such as your bedroom. They'll struggle to open the first safe, then the second one, and maybe even the third one. But after a while, they'll give up because they'll realize they've spent way too much time trying to open the safes without any success. And of course, the last safe won't contain your valuables either. They'll be securely hidden somewhere in an unexpected spot. But thieves won't be looking for them because they've wasted all their attempts on the safe. Don't rely on a beware of dog sign too much. Unless your dog is trained to recognize burglars or can warn you if strangers are sneaking around your house. But if you have a friendly dog, someone can get on its good side by offering some tasty treats or petting them. Interestingly, smaller breeds might be an even better option because they bark more and can draw your attention faster. Also, the beware of dog sign tells a burglar your pet is inside. If it can move without triggering an alarm, well, an intruder can too. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.